Our bodies have ways to prevent pathogens from entering and causing disease. And if they do manage to get in, our immune system will kick in and try and destroy them. We're going to learn about these two systems of defence. Make the most of this video and your revision time with my study along workbook. It's got loads of tasks to complete while you watch and exam questions to test what you've learnt. The link is in the description below or head over to emmatheteachy.com. The first line of defence is non-specific, meaning it's used against all types of pathogens. There are four parts to this. First up is the nose. Your nose contains hairs and mucus, which can trap any pathogens that enter through it. Then we've got the skin. You're probably aware that the skin acts as a barrier, preventing pathogens from entering the body. If it gets cut, the body repairs it by forming a scab and new skin. But the skin does more than just this. It also produces antimicrobial secretions that can destroy some bacteria. Healthy skin is also covered with a layer of microorganisms that act as an extra barrier to the entry of pathogens. Over here, we've got the trachea and bronchi, which we learnt about in the lungs and gas exchange video. Both of these tubes produce mucus to trap pathogens. They also have lots of cilia. Cilia are tiny hairs which line all the way down the tubes. These can waft the mucus back up to the throat, where it can then be swallowed. When it is swallowed, it goes down the esophagus, which is a big long tube, and into the stomach. And the stomach is number four. This organ contains hydrochloric acid, which is strong enough to kill most pathogens that enter it. These come from the mucus and from food and drinks. If any pathogens get past the first line of defense, they will meet the immune system. The immune system is made up of different white blood cells, and they can do three things to defend against pathogens. First up is phagocytosis. This is when a white blood cell engulfs, which means it sort of surrounds and absorbs. It engulfs the pathogen and then digests it, which breaks it down and ultimately destroys it. Next up is antibody production. Pathogens have antigens on their surface. You can see some of these over here. These alert the immune system to the fact that the pathogen is foreign to the body. Some white blood cells can make antibodies. These are special proteins and they have a specific shape that means that they can attach to the antigen. When they attach to it, they label it for destruction. There's a unique antibody for each type of pathogen. And lastly, we've got antitoxin production. Antitoxins are able to counteract, or in other words, neutralize, the toxins released by the pathogens. And this means they can't harm you or make you feel ill. Over here, you can see them locking together. Okay, let's test what you've understood. Pause the video, and when you're ready, just press play and we'll go over the answers. 1. Describe how the trachea helps defend against pathogens. The trachea produces mucus that can trap pathogens. It also has cilia, and these tiny hairs waft the mucus up to the back of the throat, where it's then swallowed. You could add on that the mucus will go down to the stomach where the hydrochloric acid kills the pathogens. 2. Describe what phagocytosis is. This is when a white blood cell engulfs and digests or breaks down a pathogen. This destroys it. Or you could also say it kills it. But please never say that it fights it off or anything like that. That loses a lot of people marks in the exam. And 3. Name two other ways the immune system defends the body against disease. We've got antibody production and antitoxin production, the two antis. Okay, how did you do? Vaccinations have saved millions of lives. Click here to start learning about those. And if you've enjoyed this, please don't forget to subscribe for more GCSE science help. Thanks and bye.